Good evening. My name is Barry Nelson, and I'm the Director of Development here at the Canadian Southern Baptist Seminary and College, and we are so thrilled uh, to have you here on this very, very special evening. Uh, this evening will be a time for the graduates, the men and women that have completed their studies at our school, uh, to share some of their some of their testimony, some of the, the joys, and, and maybe even some of the struggles that they've had uh, as God has worked on them and prepared them uh, for the next steps in their lives. And we're glad that you could be here to, to share with them. We know that many of you have come from a, a long distance uh, to be here on this very special uh, evening. I want to start off but with prayer, and uh, we're going to invite one of our graduates. Uh, Daniel Spellacy um, is graduating with his Master of Divinity. And uh, Daniel, by the way, was the recipient of our Blackaby Spiritual Award this year, and we've asked him to offer the opening prayer. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you're just an incredible and good God. I thank you that we can look out today, we can see your majesty and your power and your authority, and that we can celebrate that in our lives as we celebrate uh, what you have done here at Canadian Southern Baptist Seminary and College. So we just praise your holy name, Lord God, and everything that happens this weekend, may it be for your glory and for your honor, because that is what you deserve. You deserve all of it, because you are good. And so we just thank you. Um, for bringing everyone here, and I pray that we will just have an incredible time together honoring you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I do want to recognize uh, some of our guests. We, we have some folks um, that have come from a, a long distance who have been a, an integral part of not only our school, uh, but also ministry in Canada. Um, many of you know that volunteers have had an enormous role uh, in in our school from day one. They've not only constructed the buildings, but also served in many other ways, served even as encouragement. Uh, we, have two, we have some couples that have come um, from the states, and we would, if you're, if you're here and you have volunteered on our campus uh, in construction or, or encouraging others, uh, pastors, or in the Canadian, would you stand up for us, please, just real briefly? We just want to say thank you. For some of these, it's been seven, eight, nine, ten years since they've been able to be on our campus, and it's great to have them back to see what the investment that they've made uh, with their lives uh, has resulted in. Um, I also want to mention uh, that we're going to be celebrating tonight, but it is not without the very sober reminder of, of the tragedy that's being faced by many uh, eight hours north of here um, in Fort McMurray and the fires that are devastating there. I, I do want you to know um, that our campus is going to be hosting some of the evacuees, evacuees in, uh, shortly. Uh, we're glad to be able to help in that way. I know many of you have probably already made donations uh, to that cause. Uh, we do have uh, an arm related to our school called the Canadian uh, Canada Global Response. Uh, Dan Kazmaier, are you here? Would you, would you just, I hope you're here because you're graduating. Um, uh, one of our graduates plays a key role with, with CGR and uh, uh, I just want to mention that that is one of the avenues that you can make a donation that will, that will help with the disaster relief that will be coming and no doubt will last for years and years and years in the Fort McMurray area. So we want to keep them in mind. Um, we have something to celebrate and announce tonight to you that have not heard, but uh, in 2000 to 2002 when we were building our, our student housing, uh, we needed to borrow some money to finish those projects. And as of a couple of months ago, we were able to announce that we have paid off all of the indebtedness uh, that came as a result of that. And we celebrate that. We thank the Lord for his provision. Uh, the indebtedness was over a million dollars, and that has all been paid off. And so our school, uh, as of very recently, is completely debt-free, and we praise the Lord for that. Well, um, you are in for a treat tonight, and I, I do want to mention that at the end of tonight's program, there will be a one-hour presentation, and, and by the way, this may be a surprise to the presenters, um, but uh, two of our, our uh, uh, graduates tonight are, uh, are medical doctors, and they have, they have co-authored 
uh, an article. Now, let me, let me read this so that I get this straight. Um, their thesis that they'll be presenting uh, is the eschatological and soteriological implications of ventricular tachycardia ablation. And so we all, we will all look forward to that one hour presentation following this event. Um, we'll, we'll join us with rapt attention. Um, uh, no. Uh, <clears throat> tonight is going to be about celebrating and joy and fun too. And so we want to do that. I, I want to start um, the awards for this evening with our PHT awards. Now, PHT can stand for putting honey through or putting hubby through. And the intention is that the spouse of our, of our students, for those that are married, um, goes through a whole lot as the student completes their requirements for their degree. And we want to honor that, that work and that, that uh, service that they have had as well. And so presenting those is going to be Sherry Watson. Sherry, come on up. Sherry is our Director of Student Services and has served in that capacity for several years. Um, I, would, I do want to mention, too, that one of our graduates, uh, Leslie Lenz, has been her assistant for the last couple of years, and we've really appreciated her help as well. But Sherry, uh, go ahead and, and let's hear um, our PHT awards. Thank you, Barry. It's such a privilege to be here tonight. I love this part, even though I'm a nervous wreck, but I love to be able to read these sweet notes. So I've had to practice because I will start bawling because it's, they're so sweet, but here we go. So this is for Nicole from Russ. And where is Nicole? I can't see her from here. Oh, way back there, okay. Nicole, this, this is a sweet note from Russ. Nicole, I know that you know I could not have done it without you. So here's a terse to testify to all the toils you tolerated just to put me through. I remember the many Megan-less Mondays made for some not very fun days. As the boys in the building would always leave you vexing, the plethora of problems were positively perplexing. As your subs would just sit there on their dumb phone while texting. Don't forget all the hard work, those short sleeps, and how city traffic was taxing. Your full plate plus more left little time for relaxing. Yet you did what you had to and without much complaining even though those kids in the classroom were constantly draining. So this is my thank you for putting me through. I hope you can endure it for possibly another two. <laughs> Russ, Nicole, do you mind meeting me? Or can you come on down? <laughs> Hey, this is for Justin Lentz from Leslie. Husband, I will never be able to thank you for all you sacrificed for me to chase my dream. Here we are four years later and we have done it. Thank you for all the support while I worked on papers and tried to make deadlines. I am ready to see what God has in store for us and so excited to chase your dream love wife. <laughs> Justin? This is for you to for my husband, Rod Dolan, and sons, Liam, Seamus, and Quinn. And this is from Shauna. Thank you so very, very much for your support along the way, but especially for the sacrifice of time and attention that this commitment has implied. 
Know that I am forever grateful for your understanding and encouragement, Shauna. Rod. This is from Mary Ann, Jillian, Emily, and Sarah Way from Jeffrey. To my wife, Mary Ann, and my three daughters, Jillian, Emily, and Sarah, all of whom are here with me today, I just want to thank you all very much for being there and supporting me throughout this process over the past 13 years. To this audience, I want you to know that over this lengthy time period, my wife and daughters have continually had to listen to me whine about all the papers I had to write and hear me say how this is not what I do best. When I was taking Hebrew, they even helped me with a rhyme to learn the alphabet. When I decided to not take that course, the girls serenaded me with their version of the song from Greece, Hebrew School Dropout. <laughs> I think they are more excited about today than I am, and I want to thank them all, especially my wife, for putting up with me and being with me today. Okay, this is for Audrey from John Loki to Audrey. Thank you, darling, for your unending support. I think of all the evenings you did the dishes while, while I studied, all the walks and talks. You are the best. Married 27 years, you have stood by me in now five training programs. Hopefully one day I will be properly trained. <laughs> Thank you so much for your love and friendship. I love you, John. Audrey. You know, I'm from Oklahoma, so what can I say? Um, <laughs> and this is live. Okay, this is for David Park from Helen. David, you are the most patient, the most supportive, and the most loving husband I could ever imagine. For the last seven years, you have supported your busy student wife, who was always reading for the next day quiz, preparing for exams, or writing papers, even when you needed her as your companion after a long day of your demanding work. There were countless evenings I was not even available to you, and I know how important the presence of a wife is to her husband, especially at our age when the kids are all gone. Thank you so much for your sacrificial support and your love that made my study at the seminary possible for the past several years. Helen. This is to Connie Kazmaier from Dan. 
to my favorite and my only. I didn't know I would be graduating married, and I thank God every day for you. You've shown me how to be more intentional in loving others and live sacrificially so God's kingdom can grow even more. Thank you for believing in me and helping me graduate this weekend. Seminary will always be a special place for both of us as we reflect on our wedding ceremony behind the school, bringing home random free food and essay topics around the kitchen table. I love you and may you feel part of these celebrations as much as I do, Dan. Bonnie? This is for Kayla Spellacy from Daniel. Kayla has been so loving, kind, and patient through these years of schooling, from helping to read my papers to sleeping on a mat on the floor in our office while I stayed up late to finish a paper because she wanted to be together in those late, tough nights. Her support and encouragement has certainly been instrumental in my whole life, but also in getting me through seminary and growing closer to God. I am so thankful that the Lord brought us together and that I, got to, I get to spend the rest of my life with her, whatever that may entail. Daniel. This is from Leona Papineau. Many of you here may already know, but for those who do not know, on September 11th, 2006, my husband passed away due to a farming accident. I know that if he was here today, that he, along with our daughter, Ariana, would definitely deserve this recognition. Edward, like Ariana, was very supportive of me, of me and was constantly encouraging me to follow God's plan for my life. Though Edward has not been with us for these past nine years, his support and encouraging words he said to me before he passed away remain with me today. Though I'm not able to show my appreciation for Edward, who believed in me and knew that I would be serving in ministry someday, there was someone who followed in her father's footsteps and has been a huge support to me. She also believed that I would be in ministry. Tonight, I would like to show my appreciation for my daughter, Ariana. Ariana. Ariana, thank you so much for your devotion and your encouragement. You've supported me and believed in me as we have been going through this journey together. You have been an inspiration to me. Your faith and trust in knowing that God has a plan for us has been something I've turned to when I felt drained. You have reminded me time and again throughout the years to lean on God and turn to him when I have been down. Thank you for believing not just in me, but in our Heavenly Father as well. Your faith has been a definite beacon in which God has been using your life to reflect himself through so that not only me, but others can turn to. Ariana, you have been demonstrating his love just not to me, but to everyone you have come in contact with. Ariana, thank you for all that you have done to help me get here today. I love you always and forever. I know that God has great plans for you, and I look forward to continuing this amazing journey that God has placed in front of us with you. Love, Mom. And this is put, this is PMT, is putting Mom through.
Well, one of our students that's been studying with us this year, uh, though he's not getting a degree, uh, he has finished his Certificate of Christian Studies. That's a one-year program. Uh, sometimes we call it the Samuel program, and it is open uh, to high school graduates, and we've enjoyed very much having Kevin Higgins. Kevin, are you here tonight? Okay. Well, he'll be at the graduation ceremony tomorrow, and we certainly want to recognize uh, his accomplishment as well. So it's time uh, for us to begin our, our highlights uh, and testimonies from our graduates, and I believe they know the order that they're coming in, so, so go ahead and, and come on up. Uh, Emily, I think you're first. We were uh, instructed to use three minutes to share the, our reflections of our time here, which isn't the easiest task to do. But as I was thinking about what would I like to share that has been meaningful to me in my time here, I thought of three things in particular that have been meaningful here um, during the last three and a half years. Um, the first thing as I was thinking was how I first came to know of the school. It was more than 10 years ago, I came up here on a volunteer missions trip, and I learned about the school, and I learned... Um, in particular about its, its desire to honor God and to spread the gospel. And that was what attracted me to the school here. And during my time here, I've seen that, um, of not, not only just training us to do that later in the future, but um, encouraging us right now where we are um, as we're studying to be honoring God and to spreading the, be spreading the gospel. And also to see the staff and the faculty doing that as well. That that's not just something to train people for, but something to be doing just because you're Christians, not because you have a degree in it or in a job in it. Um, and second, as I was thinking about what's been meaningful to me here, was just the community at the school. Um, and I, I'm first because of alphabetical order, and I think most students after me will also reflect on the community of the school and its family-like atmosphere. Um, and I think many of us are sad to be leaving, not because we're leaving um, classes that we love or books that we love, but because we're, we're leaving friends. We're not, um, you can always pick up the books. <laughs> but. But we're not just leaving professors, we're leaving friends. We're not just leaving staff who have checked in our books or taken our tuition money, but we're leaving friends um, and that, who have walked with us. Um, some of you know, but my dad passed away during my time here. And it was the friends that, are, that were here um, to walk with me through that. And then but the third thing I was able to reflect on um, was the people outside of this immediate seminary community who have been meaningful to me, in particular my church, who has become my, my family. Um, I, I attend a Chinese church, and I'm one of the, the few Westerners, but they've taken me in, they've cared for me, they've walked with me through hard times and encouraged me in, in school. Um, in particular, Esther, who's here tonight, took me in, let me uh, live with her for my first two and a half years with her, shared much wisdom with me. And also my mom, who I'm going to ask to quickly stand up and wave and sit down, <laughs> I think God often, um, of course, we see the ultimate example of love on the, on the cross. Um, but God, I think God often uses people to help us get, get a little glimpse of, of that love and to see practically what that looks like here on earth. And I, the way my mom and dad raised me, um, I always knew growing up that mom and dad loved each other. They loved me and my brother. Um, as I came here, my mom lives in Louisiana, has never complained about me being far away, has always been um, encouraging me in everything, been excited for me, um, and that's um, helped me make choices, I think, to honor God. Um, we're, we're responsible to choose to follow God, um, but I think sometimes we're put into circumstances that make those choices easier, and the way um, mom brought me up um, made those choices a lot easier, and so for that, I'm thankful. And I don't think I've used all my three minutes, so I will dedicate the rest of my time to Shauna, who I will pass the buck to. And that's worth 20 bucks, just so you do know. Well, what a lovely event is this. Uh, it is just an absolute privilege to be here. But first, if I may, apply a broad brushstroke of thanks and gratitude for lack of time to our donors, our sponsors, our Randall Harpers. Emily, I think you're a teeny bit taller than me. Thank you so very much for what you do, for letting us come here every single day to do what we love to do best, which is really and truly to bask at the feet of Christ and immerse ourselves in the word and hopefully leave one day being able to share that with someone else. We are here because of you and thank you so deeply much for what you do. Thank you to our board of trustees, especially our chairwoman, Kathy, and just for the, the great many of you who have come um, enormous distances to support us here. I can't be more grateful. Uh, because time is of the essence, if I did have a lot more, I would love to turn to Dr. Don 
and tell him how very, very much I would love to meet his daughters one day. And if I did meet them, I would certainly tell them to cherish their father every single day of their lives, because he is certainly the father that I wished I could have had. And if time did allow, I would turn to Dr. Black, uh, Dr. Peacock, and I would tell him that this preaching sermon thing that he does, this, this lecture teaching thing, has probably never penetrated my heart to more than anyone else's in life. All my live long years, I live to hear a preacher or a speaker preach and speak into my life the way he does. And uh, there have been far too many times that your lectures have left me in a puddle on the ground, uh, completely at the mercy of God's grace to pick up my bag and leave afterwards. And for the amount of work that you've done to break down the layers and the walls that I may have built around former convictions of faith, you also took the time to ensure that they were well planted with seeds of truth. And there is absolutely no words that can put a price or enough gratitude on that. And then, of course, if one did not have only three minutes to speak, they would finally turn to Dr. Blackaby, whose name is its own legacy in this school. But if I may just say, your book, the Blackaby Spiritual Leadership book, is the only one that I've ever passed on. I passed on to a young man who came to faith with me a few weeks ago. And what I said to him is what I'll say to you. Really and truly, to take Christian ethics and to take spiritual leadership, one barely needs a book. You are the book. You are the model. You are the pattern. You are the content. And may I just say that for giving me an example of what true integrity looks like, for what the essence of Christ-like character looks like, for your veracity, I thank you, applaud you, and I hope that everyone here tonight also does that as well. In conclusion, thank you to all my peers to say that I have been a peer of a renowned surgeon and a medical doctor to someone like my Emily, who's our sign language, Emily's and my sign, sign language began like this in class, I would simply pick up on, on a, a cue or a, a comment that seemed a bit off, and I would just simply need to do this <laughs> with my eyes, unfortunately, and she would kind of do the sweet little giggle thing she had, and that's what got us through so many classes. <laughs> Dr. Logie, thank you so much for treating me both as a daughter and as a peer, for advising that I need radar detectors planted on my car to slow down coming in here, but also for being one of the first to laugh at all my inane jokes, but above all for bringing your lovely daughters to this school. I don't know what I would do without them. And then for my boys, the Dan and the bespeckled, freckled, Dennis the Menace, David, <laughs> for giving me probably one of my best compliments I've ever had in life when he was introducing me to someone and said, oh no, you'd remember her if you met her, she's unforgettable. Thank you so very, very much. And I think this is the only occasion I've gotten up here to speak without feeling the need to apologize, except perhaps for going over my three minutes. And so on that, I shall leave. But in closing, when I left Rocky Mountain College before coming over here, and this, will, I promise, will just take 30 seconds, the president there pulled me aside at the door and said, Shauna, you will be moving over to seminary, and he gave me some pointers, one of which was never, ever exceed the length of the paper that your professor asked you to do, and I believe I kept that. And then he said, ask someone coming over here. One of the secrets I've kept from just about every single one of the students here is that I actually entered without an undergrad degree. So I actually owe this school two degrees, as Susan often reminded me of. And when I said how desperately much I would barely be able to get through this without Steve Booth being here. I said that because, in fact, I said this to her, I often felt he was the only one who liked me. And then Emily said, no, Sean, I'm sure some of the other professors liked you. <laughs> but wherever Dr. Booth is today, I owe this degree to you for taking a chance on me. And when that president said, Shauna, you will go there and you will learn Trabian, and you'll learn it the right way. And you will do as they ask, and you will all make it look so easy. Let me just say to you today that I stand here to say, there is absolutely nothing easy about this. This is the tough place. This has been my tough place. 
and I leave, not because I was able to do this on my own strength, but join me at least in spirit in saying, to God be the glory for giving us his power, his strength, for giving us the blood of his son Christ Jesus that empowers us to do this, and for giving us his Holy Spirit day after day after day to make the impossible seem possible. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hello, for those of you who don't know me, which is probably 90% of this room, my name is Russ, and I am in the Bachelor, was in the Bachelor of Christian Ministry program. I guess tomorrow I'll be done that. I am married to Nicole, and uh, the two of us have been here at the seminary for the past three and a half years. And I came here as uh, in response to the call to ministry. I came here reluctantly, um, thanks in behalf to a Brazilian man uh, in the left middle of the congregation here tonight. And he kept insisting, he's probably the, the best recruiter this school has, as Barry Nelson mentioned this morning. And he kept uh, insisting, Russ, come check out the school. No, Sam, I don't want to. I don't think God's calling me here. No, come check it out. So, okay. So I went and I came here and I thought, okay, this is where God's calling me to go. Um, I, that was so clear to me, and I don't know, looking back, what I was expecting as I was coming here, but now as I reflect back on the past three and a half years, I think that I can say that I wasn't expecting what I got. I remember coming here, and the, f the first semester, I don't know if it was the first class I had or not, but the first semester, I had a class by two heavyweights in the school, Dr. Blackaby and Dr. Frank Uraney, and that class was principles of leadership that we had, and that class hit me like a freight train because I realized that these people, they take ministry and the call to ministry seriously. They see ministry as a high calling, ministry as a holy calling, and ministry as a heavy calling. Ministry isn't something that is to be taken lightly or to be entered into flippantly, and they take it seriously. And I was not prepared to come into a setting like that. I was not prepared to come into a class like that. I'm thankful that they deal with it that way. That was great because it made me realize that Russ, when God calls you, it's not something to be taken lightly, but it's a calling to respond to seriously. And they helped set the tone of the rest of my time in that sense. I discovered as I was here areas of giftedness, areas of passion that I didn't know I had before. And I think that was part of why God allowed me to come here. Uh, and I realized, uh, oddly enough, that I enjoyed school. My eyes were open to this world of academics that I'd never been in before. And I realized, man, I kind of like this. So I, st I started spending time with Cassie, uh, Kathy Seidler in the library, and I would uh, hang out with her there during the day, and I loved it. Getting into books, reading, writing papers, learning about all this stuff I didn't know about before. No one taught me this stuff. No one told me about this stuff. And here I'm learning it for the first time, and it was great. Uh, and I loved getting to the world of academics, and I learned a lot, but the more I learned, the more I realized that I had a lot left to learn. Um, there's many highlights that could be shared, many good memories, many thank yous to be given. Um, if I had to thank two people out of uh, the many, um, I'd probably thank Dr. Rainey. Uh, there were many times that I went past his office and sat in his chair that he had there. His door was always open and he always allowed students to come in there and I took advantage of that and probably abused that system, which is maybe why he's leaving, but I, <laughs> but I, I appreciate that. So thank you very much um, and I think uh, I, I wouldn't be graduating well if it wasn't for Elaine Phillips. Thank you for editing all those papers at the beginning of my time here. I will not forget that and I learned a lot. I think I can honestly say that I enjoyed all my classes. There wasn't one class I didn't enjoy. There wasn't one professor that I didn't enjoy. And if I didn't enjoy them, I wouldn't say it publicly. And there was a lot of things that I took away from the classes. And I, and I was reflecting on this also. I'm pretty sure in every sermon or Bible study I've given, there has been some sort of quotation or little class tidbit that I've used from one of my classes as I've been preparing and as I've given these sermons and these Bible studies. So you can tell that this seminary has high quality professors and they instill good things into their students. I feel now at the end of this three and a half years, not that I'm ready for ministry, but that I'm more prepared for ministry than I was uh, three and a half years ago today. And in that sense, I think my time has paid off. In terms of what's next for me, I finished my bachelor degree and I plan on taking the next two years to try and master that. Thank you. Hello, my name is Sebastian. For those of you that don't know me, in this case, probably a good 99% of you. 
And like Sherry Watson earlier, I am a nervous wreck. I am nervous, uh, I always am nervous, no matter if it's public speaking or even preaching in front of a class of three students. And for that, I thank Dr. Watson for just being the great man that he is, for, for teaching me preaching and just being there for Elevate and just being part of the uh, tapestry was a blessing to me. And I want to thank the, the whole staff and faculty here. Five, uh, I should start six years ago, and I can see Pastor Seafish smiling there. Six years ago, I went through one of the most difficult times of my life, something that I wish none of you go through. And most of you don't know this, but here it goes. I am divorced, and that was one of the most horrible things in my life. As human, I can say that was a mistake, the marriage part, not the divorce, but I am here to answer God's calling. Before, I wanted to do Bible college, but depression got in my way. Then I came here after another episode of depression, and, and here I am, finally done. And I thank all of you for for your support. And a few, few of the students I want to special thank you to would be, unfortunately, my also the freckle face guy that Sean was talking about. <laughs> and I think he's hiding back there because he doesn't. He, yes, David, I know it's your turn next. <laughs> One of the running jokes with him is he should be here for another two years to do his MDiv. So bug him about that. <laughs> and I want to thank. Dr. Blackaby, I think when I went through the leadership course few year, um, two years ago, even though he was there for only half the time because of other school engagements, traveling and whatnot to get support for the school, that course was the beginning of truly shaping me for, for ministry or whatever it is that God's calling me. I probably say I'm one of the exceptions. I will not be a pastor. I will not be a missionary. I will not be a church planter. My goal in life would be writing. I love writing, I love reading, just not in the academia world. <laughs> so, I've only read half the textbooks I was supposed to. <laughs> and most of my papers were only written the one week before the due date. But thank you all for, for this great community here and just for who you guys are in, in the body of Christ. And now I know my three minutes are not up, but I'll hand this over to David Hansen, baby face Hansen. The only way you can get away with that is you're my roommate. I know where you live. I will be seeing you after this. All right, so um, we got three minutes to talk and as everybody else was thinking, what do you say to cram two years into three minutes? Uh, so I did a little bit of what is education all about? And um, William Butler Yeats said, education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. That's one thing that this school has done in my life. The caliber of teaching is incredible here. It is top notch, it is a jewel set on a hill. I wish more people knew, knew about the school, but their professors are passionate about what they teach. And it's their passion that uh, motivates us to learn and to strive to do better. Um, I wanna thank a few people who have played a huge role in my life. I'm gonna start with uh, my fiance, Amy. So uh, I met her in my, uh, wow, it's been almost a year. <laughs> <laughs> so um, no, she's been incredible. She's been there supporting me, encouraging me, and um, motivating me to press on. I remember after my first semester here, I'm like, I am done. Um, I wanted to so get into the ministry and um, 
Amy always reminded me, you know, you finish well, finish strong. Um, I want to thank Leona, who, um, who played a huge role in my, especially my first year here. Um, there was uh, a lot of personal changes that I, I had to do, uh, owning my own faith, owning my own convictions. And Leona, you did a, a, a great work in counseling, mentoring, and just allowing me to be me, the speckled, freckled Dennis and Menace. <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Dr. Watson. You've been an incredible mentor in my life, showing me what evangelism, what uh, sharing the gospel is about, and especially how, we, how you shaped my preaching. Before I came here, I passed it on my own for about six months, and I passed it with my dad um, for much longer than that. And I've had a lot of experience behind the pulpit preaching and, and teaching, but you've really showed me how it can be a conversation and um, how that's important in especially discipleship and growing, uh, making disciples. So I want to thank everybody who's, who's played a huge role in my life and the school. It's been incredible. I'm sad to be going. Really, and <laughs> so thanks everyone. Hey guys, I think this is my uh, fifth fifth time doing this. Not in graduating or or failing, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I've been here for five years, and every year I've been really impressed by the quality of people um, not only sharing their stories, but what this school has meant for them. And um, yeah, I'm just basically at a loss for words. There's dozens of people out there who have um, played a, a huge role in my life, and I'd like to thank each of you. Um, and not only in person, but hopefully by the life that I live as a result of you pouring your life into me. So um, yeah, even... From first semester, I remember Dr. Cobb was here, and we were off to free food. I know that was a theme earlier. But um, they needed someone to drive, so I was like, I can do it, and I signed up ready to go, but I found out the day of you need to be 25 to drive a vehicle. So um, here I was, the youngest guy in seminary, and Dr. Cobb took me alongside, and um, once a week for a whole semester, he was able to pour into my life. We would talk about ministry to, to girls and other things, and um, that, that's a theme as well, where each professor, um, they just do life together. You know, we would study Bonhoeffer's book, but at the same time, these were professors who have done ministry, they're church planners, they're pastors, um, they're theologians in their own right, and they just wanted to emulate what it means to follow Christ. So um, I, I just want to say thank you. Um, even in Christian ethics, I learned how our faith intersects not only with business, but Last week in small group, we're wondering, like, how does a Christian buy clothes? And I was about to say, I don't know, but then I realized I was graduating today and <laughs> that I do have some competency in, in figuring this out. So we're flipping through uh, the book, Kingdom Ethics, and, you know, trying to figure out how this works. And, um, yeah, I, I've realized that we have such an incredible and robust faith and Savior, and I've seen that through the life of um, not only my professors, but uh, co-workers, and I haven't told Barry this, but I've told many that he's um, my Cochrane dad. Um, I've been here for a few years, and uh, he taught me how to extreme coupon, and also, <laughs> we know it's true. If, if you want to figure out Aeroplan, Air Miles, Safeway, all those, just talk to him. He's, he's there for you, with referral points, too. Um, but that being said, we would even pray for each other each week, and um, a lot of you don't know, but the professors, they meet every Tuesday, and they pray for um, current students, but also graduates. So, yeah, I want to thank you. And even three years ago, uh, tonight, um, a professor came up to me and said, Dan, why don't you play songs at this, um, this uh, Friday fellowship? And it was my first time leading, and just seeing um, professors come alongside you and take you from one place and move you along the way, I'm indebted to you, so thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Han Sung Kim, came from South Korea, not North Korea. Um, just uh, um, maybe some of them maybe 
no familiar with my name, Henry. Yeah, this is my English new name. It's just I've learned so many things in this school as a minister. Yeah, academically and practically. So just I'm doing my ministry at my Korean church in Calgary pretty well, I hopefully. Yeah, I'm doing well. Yeah. <laughs> just I'd like to say that um, there is one more uh, privilege I could learn, I could enjoy it in this school. That's a journey group. Um, my journey group professor was Dr. Watson. Um, just I remember it was a very tough season for me. Just I could um, try to find out my um, job position, um, minister position, but I couldn't. So just I was so disappointed. But just um, Dr. Watson said that, um, Hanson, maybe you are going through um, wilderness, the principle of wilderness. That's what I uh, could learn in this school. Just one of one of um, amazing and um, just very practical and spiritual principles in this school. Just, um, yeah, and I'd like to say that I couldn't finish this, this um, study in this school without uh, professors and all, fa all faculty, all staff in this school. Just I want to say thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Leslie Lentz. So I've been going back and forth um, on how in the world I'm supposed to sum up four years in three minutes. So I'm going to do my best here um, with just a, f a few words. Excited, scared, hospital, family, friends, hospital, <laughs> exams, church, hospital, homework, housework, hospital. Um, all jokes aside, I've definitely had my fair share of medical issues in my four years that I've been here. Um, but I honestly would not change a single day of it um, of the past four years. First day I walked into this very room for orientation, I was scared to death. But then Dr. Blackaby and Dr. Booth came over to chat with me. They knew exactly who I was, where I was from, told me they'd been praying for me. and. I went home afterwards and Justin said, so how was it? And I was said, well, it was weird, but in a good way. <laughs> so in the four years that we've been here, uh, my husband has worked on a drilling rig up in northern BC, which meant I was a single mom for about 28 days at a time, and then he was home for 14 days. Although it was not easy, God has showed us so many things. First, God provides. He provided the job for Justin so that we were able to pay my way through school. Second, God provides. God provided me with energy and a drive that I needed to go through school and manage our home. Third, you can see a pattern here, God provides. God has provided our family with new friends and family relationships that will last a lifetime. The school has walked by my side as a student as a staff member, as a mother, and as a wife. And the fourth thing that God has taught us in all of this is that God provides. God provided me with an amazing education that has set me up for ministry in more ways than I could ever have thought. It's so obvious that every single one of the professors are doing exactly what God has called them to do. At this school, the motto is training leaders for tough places. And they're definitely doing that, but they're also setting us up for the best, possible, the best possible person to go into ministry. These professors are amazing. There were times over the past four years that I've gone to class and honestly, I wasn't there mentally. But as soon as the prof started to teach, I couldn't help but learn. The passion that they all have just pours out of them. And it's a little bit of a joke that Russ is the favorite student in the college program. <laughs> but I'd like to note that I asked Dr. Rainey not to retire until I graduated. And I just would like to note that he's now retiring and I'm graduating. So <laughs> clearly the favorite, Russ. Sorry about that. <laughs> I do want to take the time to thank my family and friends for keeping the kids so that I could do homework and all the encouraging words that kept me going. I want to thank all the faculty and staff here at the school. You guys go over and above, and I don't think I would have made it to today without all of your help. A special thanks go to the Watsons and the Booths for all the doctor's visits 
and the hospital visits you chauffeured me to, and even being my stand-in parents when doctors had questions. I want to thank my husband and my kids for allowing me to chase my dream and everything you guys gave up for me to accomplish this. And again, thank you, God, for calling me this to ama this amazing school and for providing all that you do. My name is John Logie, and I would also like to thank all of our professors and people that have um, instilled an awful lot, have expended your energy and, and uh, used your training to help train us. Last August, I was working up in Peace River, and my family was here. I owed rent starting the September 1st, and so I phoned down to my daughter, who is our family accountant, and I said, um, Andrea, would you please write a check for X number of dollars and get your mom to sign it and take it into the business office and give it to them? She dutifully did so. And in the meantime, Barry Nelson, our director of development, sent me an email saying, um, would you be interested in, and this was a fan out email, would you be interested in sending some money to the school? Uh, it was a fundraiser email. and." Um, um, would you like to do that? And uh, my daughter phoned me back and said, Dad, I got to the business office, and they said, Wow, thank you very, very much. <laughs> and I put two and two together and said, I think I just made a donation to the school. Amen. So I get this really nice email back from Barry saying, Thank you for the donation. <laughs> and then it suddenly dawned on me that our um, accounting person in the school, her last name, by the way, is Coster. I thought, no, that's appropriate. <laughs> our chief fundraiser for the school is our president, and his first name is Rob. <laughs> well, they skipped those two steps, and they just sent me Barry. So I want to warn you that if you students coming up, if you want to come to the school, just say yes to the coster, and they won't send Rob after you. And if you don't listen to those two, they'll bury you. <laughs> we visited this school two and a half years ago. Or was it? Yeah, something like that. And I remember sitting down in the president's office he was out robbing someone. He wasn't there at the time. <laughs> but um, we sat down in the office, and the, the motto of the school is training leaders for tough places. And that really caught my attention. I am learning more and more all the time that our world, whether it's in Canada or in foreign nations, some of my classmates are from other nations, there are an awful lot of tough places out there whether it's in Canada or elsewhere, I just haven't been involved in a ministry place that isn't tough. And I'm very thankful for a place that targets leaders for tough places because that's where we're going. And I'm not going to mention any professors by name, but you've taught me Old Testament, you've taught me New Testament, you've taught me dealing with conflict, history, you've taught me all kinds of things. And I'm very grateful because the next place we minister is going to be another tough place. And it is really a compliment to you when people in the congregation start to say, I can hear your professors in you. Thank you. I already know to lower it, so. Well, like everyone else, I'm, I've entitled this thank you. Um, it is still hard to grasp that graduation is here, it is a joyous occasion, and I am happy we have the opportunity to celebrate together like this. But it is also an emotional one as well, as I have come to consider this place a home, and all of you as family. <laughs> and it's because of this, I am really not ready to say goodbye. 
As I was contemplating on what I want to say this evening, I reflected on the journey of these past four years and what has taken place, and it was really a journey. God used this time and many of you to help me seek him more and learn to lean on him. I also want to take this opportunity to say thank you. First and foremost, I would like to say thank you to Ariana. She has seen me at my worst when I struggled and battled through studying Greek and Hebrew and writing papers. Ariana, you have continued encouraging and supporting me through my meltdowns and through my insane joyous celebrations when the paper was done. Next, I want to thank the professors for being so encouraging and understanding. I know that there were times I did not know if I was even going to make it, but each one of you in your own way have encouraged me to not give up. And whenever I walked by, your encouraging smile would inspire me to continue on. Thank you also for your prayers. It was very comforting knowing that my professors and the staff here were continuously praying for me. Next, I want to say thank you to my fellow classmates and graduates. You all have inspired me and spoke encouragement one time or another. It was very comforting to know that when I was struggling with a paper or with an assignment, I only had to call, text, Facebook, and Twitter, what, um, if I knew how to do those, uh, <laughs> uh, someone, and moments later, I knew that they would be at my door helping me out. Or if I even needed to get Ariana to skating, or needed a ride or help in any other way, I knew that I could count on you. Thank you to the office staff, my goodness, the work you guys all do. Believe me, be all was behind the scenes, but it did not go unnoticed. You guys were busy, but you even took time when you saw me come by, and you would just want to chat and catch up with me whenever I came. So thank you so much for those moments. Thank you to Ed and Herb and others who helped in the maintenance staff and the housing department. Arianne and I have loved calling student housing our home. Uh, from your garbage pickups to show, sh uh, snow plowing, lawn maintenance, and everything else behind the scenes. I want you to know that I truly appreciate it because I didn't have to do it. Uh, <laughs> no, really, it did not go unnoticed, and we thank you so much. Um, thank you to the CSB, SNC, <laughs> Board of Trustees, and all the volunteers. I am so glad that I have this opportunity to say thank you to you as well. You, your love and dedication to serve for this school is so much appreciated, so thank you so much for your prayers as well, and the love that you have for the staff, the professors, and us students. Thank you. Hello, my name is Helen Park. Um, right after I retired from my Kuman math and reading business in 2009, I started the Master of Biblical Studies program. I just wanted to learn more about God here at this seminary as much as I can, but I never thought I would complete the program. Master degree at my age didn't just click to me at all, but here I am finishing the whole program and graduating tomorrow, even though it took seven long years. First of all, I thank God for giving me the opportunity to learn, the availability to continue without breaks, and the ability to complete the program. Besides my beloved husband, I want to thank to my daughter, Joanne Park Hodges, who seeded in me the idea of continuing education at the seminary level, which had never occurred to me before. And then, whether she liked it or not, she became my living English teacher, <laughs> who ended up editing all my papers for the first two several years. And also, I want to thank to my dear mother, who always has been trying to be more independent even when I know she needed me. And keeping her health in shape so that I could <clears throat> concentrate on my study. 
<clears throat> I thank to all professors for their teaching, on, which has impacted my life for good. Especially, I thank to Dr. Peacock, um, your passion for teaching and your vast knowledge on scripture has impacted my life greatly. As you remember, I was very insecure and unconfident in my capability in learning at this old age. When I took your courses, Biblical Interpretation, it was so heavy course in Hebrew four years ago. However, your step-by-step -step teaching made everything easier and doable. And finally, I found the courses were not as hard as I feared. After I completed the courses that semester successfully, I gained so much confidence and momentum to finish the whole program. Thank you so much. And now I would like to share a treasured lesson I learned during this journey. During the class of New Testament II, uh, five years ago, I asked Dr. Rainey, how do we love whom we cannot love? Actually, that was my life problem at, I was facing at the time. I knew I should love the neighbors as Jesus commanded, but I just couldn't keep the commandment. Being so brokenhearted for not keeping my master's commandment, even though I try hardest with my own effort, I had to know how I could fix it. I remember Dr. Rainey writing down on the whiteboard like this. Love is an action word, putting the supreme value on the person even though the person does not deserve it at all. Wow, it was like lightning that hit my heart. Yes, Jesus put the supreme value on me, who doesn't deserve it at all. Since that afternoon, my life has been greatly changed. Whenever I find some difficulty in the relationship with somebody, I am trying to put a hat of supreme value on the person's head intentionally in my mind. Thank you, Dr. Rainey, for teaching me the concept of love and also the concept of humility with your own rich life experiences and your humble heart. <clears throat> During this journey at the seminary, God has given me a clear vision and direction on how I should live for the rest of my life. On top of God-given experiences and gifts in counseling, teaching, and mentoring, uh, God also gave me a passion to make disciple makers. Therefore, using all my previous experiences and gifts from God and the skills and knowledges I have learned from the seminary, I will continue the mission of making disciple makers for the rest of my life until I meet my Lord. Thank you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Brianne. I have attended this school for the past two years. Wow, has time flown by. Through the last two years, this school has become more of a place to attend weekly class, write exams, hand in papers, and hand in assignments. It's become a place where I'm always greeted with a smiling face from a fellow student, professor, teacher, faculty, or staff member. It's become a place of community for me, where I have made new and lasting friendships, a place where I have been trained to be on the field in my ministry, and where I have learned to do ministry well and to the best of my ability. The school has become a place where I felt supported, encouraged, loved, and accepted by many of the staff, classmates, students, teachers, and professors. They have poured their hearts in me, oh, there we go, through knowledge and experience and invested their time in my life. School has never been easy for me, and I've always struggled. And as my final semester ended, I've worked harder, studied even harder, handed every assignment in on time, and was able to achieve grades I never thought I would be able to achieve. It's because of this school that I have become a better student, better public speaker, and my relationship with God has become stronger than it was before I became a student. I would like to thank Elaine Phillips for investing in me, encouraging me, and always helping me whenever I needed anything. I want to thank my boyfriend, Andrew, for always encouraging me, praying for me, and supporting me my final semester when I was staying up late to finish a paper or studying on our dates because I had exams the following week. 
I want to thank my family for always supporting me, encouraging me, and telling me to keep going when school seems stressful. And lastly, I want to thank my grandparents for helping me pay for my college education over the last four years. I am so blessed to be able to walk away tomorrow debt-free. I'm so excited and blessed to be able to graduate from this college, and I can't wait to see where God leads me next. Hey everyone, as you might have heard before, my name is Daniel Spellacy. I'm very glad to be graduating. Very glad. Uh, <laughs> I want to mirror a little bit of what Brianne said at the beginning in this idea of how these last, for me, three years have gone really fast. And as I was thinking about that, and I was saying, did they really go fast? I began to reflect back. And I thought of one night in particular, one wonderful night, where I stayed up all night. I actually started working on my paper, and I'm a little bit of a procrastinator, or a lot if you ask my wife. And I was working on my paper, and all of a sudden I realized, hey, it's like 6 in the morning, and I'm still not done yet, and it's due by 8. And so I'm, I'm working on my paper, and, and I was just so blessed that that night went so fast. Uh, it was wonderful. And I, got, I was so glad I got to go to class that morning at 8 a.m. after staying up all night. But really, it has been wonderful, and it has gone fast. It's been uh, unbelievable. Uh, I actually was blessed to speak at the graduating chapel, however long ago that was, uh, a, f a few weeks ago. And uh, in those 15 minutes I got, and in the 20 minutes that I actually took of those 15 minutes, I got to talk a little bit about what I've learned. So I'm going to continue on from there um, of what I learned. And uh, one of the things that I came out saying was this idea of how God doesn't just have an end result for us planned. He called me into ministry years ago, but he has the path to get where he wants us to be planned. And one of the amazing things about that path is that it's not just our own path, but often it's going to crisscross with a lot of different people. There's going to be times where our path is going to come alongside other people. And, and these last three years have been an amazing example of that in my life, of coming alongside the staff members here, the students, um, and the opportunities that I've gotten to grow here. And through those years, they've invested a lot into me um, because they love God. I mean, that's what it is. They love God so much, and through that love for God, they decided to love me and to want to pour into me and invest in me. And just as I've gotten uh, the opportunity in the last few weeks to write a couple of theological reflection papers about my time here, what God's really um, brought out for me is, Daniel, how are you spending that time in your life where you're crisscrossing with people? And I think that's the biggest thing I'm going to take from here is a lot of knowledge, a lot of understanding about how to do ministry, but in the end it's what are you doing to show people around you who Jesus is, to show people the love of Jesus when your paths cross with them for however long that is, whether it's a year, three years, five years, or ten minutes. How are you going to show these people that you're not just another person, but you're a person who has Christ living in you, and you want to love them and care for them. And that's going to transform, and has been already transforming, how I do everything at the church I work at and how I interact with people around me. And uh, I have this place, and, and the Lord bringing me here to thank um, for just showing me that so that my life is going to be different, and I'm, I'm excited. So thank you. Well, hello, I'm Jeff Way, and I learned today I'm the mystery student. Uh, I've been uh, here for 13 years doing this online, so I've never actually been on campus. And I did try to keep this to three minutes, <laughs> but uh, now you're going to learn what it is when a surgeon says he's done in three minutes. <laughs> I've been doing this online, and as, as I shared today, that Without the online program, I would not have been able to do this. And I really thank this school for starting that program all those years ago. And I know there are many others who have done it as well, and uh, it has been a benefit to so many people. So how do I sum up? Oh, one other thing. This is Jamie Stewart, and <laughs> for those of you. And uh, Jamie's an independent filmmaker, and Jamie's been doing a series on, pe on people of passion and a doc series of documentary films. So he's actually doing one on me and he's been following me around in my life for the past year. And so he's here today to also document this part of my life. So don't worry, it's, you're not gonna be in the movie, it's all about me. <laughs> uh, 
So, so how do I sum up 13 years? And I, I've been thinking about this, with, listening to everybody else. I thought I'd share a few stories. And I, I'm a surgeon here in Calgary, and I do trauma at the foothills. And I look after the people who've been uh, pretty severely injured, and we have to put them back together. And oftentimes, we have to put their abdominal walls together. And when I did ethics, I had trouble with some of these papers and stuff I had to do. And so I put people together. Sometimes their own parts aren't there, so we use mesh. And we use mesh that comes from uh, pigs and beef and sometimes humans. We don't really talk about that with people. So I sort of got thinking about this and the ethical issues around it. And uh, so I went to about 26 or 28 different religious groups and got their input on use of mesh. And bottom line is... You won't eat it, but it's okay to put it in you if you're going to save your life. So that was the bottom line. But I gave uh, Dr. Blackby the paper complete with colored pictures, and I hear that it still gets well talked about, about here, around here. <laughs> Another experience I had, and the booths aren't here, but when I did evangelism, again, not being a pastor, I had, some, I had a hard time getting data to write this paper. And... Uh, Anyway, at the end of the day, I ended up going home from work one night, and I just went to the mustard seed and said, Hi, my name's Jeff. I need a place to stay. And when I got checked out for drugs and weapons, <laughs> I thought, what am I doing? But anyway, I got through that, and they asked, what do, you do? what do you do? And well, at the time, I was actually taking a welding course. So I said, well, I'm taking a welding course, so I wasn't being untruthful. And anyway, I got in there, and this lady came by. She said, Jeffrey, this is your first time here. And I said, yes. And she showed me where to get clean underwear and where to get a blanket and stayed on the ground on a mat. And I was two guys that just got out of jail that day. And I wa watched everybody, and I phoned home. and said, what are you doing? Like, you know, and it's just like, well, you know, I learned. I, I watched them. They put their boots under their mattress, and they would take their stuff with them when they went to the bathroom. And so anyway, I, I got through the night. And let me tell you, it, if you're homeless in Calgary, you are well looked after. Um, there's no doubt about that. The scary part was I could relate to two-thirds of the people. <laughs> they were either my age or they were from the East Coast. And I could, and being from Newfoundland, and I've worked in Fort Mac, and, uh, and I have my nephew coming to stay with us tomorrow who's now been evacuated. And um, it was, that was a scary thought. I could totally relate to two-thirds of these people. Any day I could be right there with them. But the other thing I could, about that was I was looked after, but you couldn't tell who was just doing good and who was a Christian. And that really stood out, and that we really need to not just do good, but people need to know where we're coming from. The other course was apologetics, and that was the last one I did just did this fall. And we had to do this survey. And man, it was hard to get anyone to take this survey. I had to go out somewhere we didn't know. And I even had $20 gift certificates from Tim Hortons for people to do this survey. They still wouldn't do it once it was about religion. But anyway, one, I, I interviewed this one young woman. She was in her mid-30s, single mother of a four-year-old child. And one of the questions that was on the survey was, what's Christmas? Do you, celebra do you celebrate Christmas? And what does it mean? Well, yeah, she buys gifts for her kid. And I said, but what does it mean? And she, she had absolutely no idea. And this young woman group was born and raised in Marta Loop in the center of Calgary. And she had zero idea. And then she said to me, by the way, what's with the Easter bunny and the chocolate eggs? And so I filled around what Easter was all about. Turns out this young woman was raised Muslim in Calgary. And what was even more scary, she told me, she grew up being told to hate and distrust every Christian. And that's in the middle of Calgary. So we've got lots of mission work right here where we are. So anyway, on to my talk. <laughs> on starting seminary here 13 years ago, I had a pretty big handicap. I can't type. <laughs> I graduated high school in 1973, and back then typing was only for girls. Added to that, my writing is horrible. Even my grade two teacher told me that. And my singing is worse. <laughs> and I'm without a doubt the most stereotypical surgeon when it comes to your handwriting. For my whole career, I've dictated everything and somebody types it. 
So now exams were always easy. There were multiple choice, fill in the blanks. But with all these papers, what was I going to do? So anyway, my answer to that was Janine. Janine is here with us tonight. She's uh, my long, long-standing, most valuable employee. She, she's here with her husband, Ken, tonight. And uh, she's been my transcriptionist for years. And so I would bring this tape of verbal diarrhea. I would dictate all my papers. I'd just pick up the dictaphone, and I'd just dictate. And uh, out would come this paper in complete, perfect Arabian format. <laughs> So I just got to thank Janine tonight for all the papers she's typed for me all these years. And thank you very much, Janine. And, you know, over all these years, many people have asked me, well, what are you doing this for? And, you know, I've put this in as a continuing medical education. We have to do 80 hours a year for our, uh, keep our licenses up. And I've put this in, and I've, they've challenged me and said, well, this doesn't count. And I said, are you sure about that? You mean spirituality and medicine doesn't count? So anyway, we've, every time there's someone new in the position, I have to re-go through that. But uh, each time I, I win, <laughs> or God wins. But one of the things, I, you know, I've done medical missions work. We've, my wife and I and my daughter, one occasion as well, we've been uh, overseas with uh, Samaritan's Purse. We were in Haiti and uh, Southeast Asia after the tsunami. But the other area is bioethics. And today, more than ever, uh, ethical issues are really uh, a, a very significant issue for us. Uh, the, the, me the nomenclature is changing daily. I, uh, because of this degree, I actually sit on one of the provincial expert panels on what up until this week was considered a physician-assisted death. It's now got a new acronym, MAID, M-A-I-D, Medically Assistance in Dying. And this will become law in this country in a month. And this is going to have huge impact on, on uh, the church and people who are going to seek this. And as well, I just got appointed to the Ethics Committee at the Rocky View Hospital in the past month as well. And there's no doubt this degree is the key that allows you to get into these, into these committees. And um, there's no doubt in my mind that God has opened these doors for me to get on these committees, which allows a Christian worldview to come into these forums. Now, on another note, since starting this journey in 2003, I've met many students here at the seminary through online and then through the intensive courses that we've had to do. And uh, over that time, I've been amazed at the commitment and dedication they show in their desire to study God's Word. But within this group of students, it's those bivocational pastors who have amazed me with what I know has been both personal and family sacrifices in order to continue their studies. And people today, you know, say, oh, you're, how are you so busy? How do you do this? Well, you know, I do one course a term. And yeah, I work at four hospitals, I've been on three call schedules, have a busy office, and a family. But these guys are full-time work, full-time pastors, full-time families, and they're coming to seminary. And that has just absolutely amazed me. So in order to honor that and to commemorate my graduation, my family and I are here tonight to present the seminary with a gift to establish the Dr. Jeffrey Way Family Scholarship to uh, be able to provide financial assistance to these and other seminary students in the future. Very Thank you. Thank you so much. I hope that with these testimonies, you have gotten a little glimpse of the community of faith that we have here, the community of learning. Um, I was going to introduce Dr. Blackaby to you. However, I think our students have already done a good job of that. Dr. Rob Blackaby has served uh, for nine years at our school, and he has a, a word to share with us. I want to speak to the graduates and 
Not unlike a wedding ceremony when I speak to a bride and a groom and then everybody else just gets to listen in. <laughs> Sometimes on evenings like this, uh, you hear, and tonight's no exception, that people are sad to be leaving. You need to know that the relationship that we've enjoyed with you continues. And it will, we prayed for you as students every single week and we promise to continue to pray for you as alumni every single week. We will be as intimately acquainted with you and your life and how we can pray for you as you will allow us to be. We wanna gather with you tonight uh, to acknowledge the hard work that you've done you have finished, for many of you, all of you, a very difficult, stretching, trying journey. And it's right to then stop or pause and breathe and look back from the summit and say, this was a hard climb, but what of you? But we, we acknowledge that at the same time we celebrate God. We celebrate all that he's allowed us to do here in a school that almost 30 years ago, there were pioneers who dreamed, sacrificed, built, planted, so that we could be here in 2016 with another graduating class. And I would say, you graduates, graduates, you are not the only ones who feel a twinge of sadness because we're gonna miss you too. You don't get to journey this long together. Just think, if you've been here two years, how much life has happened. If you've been here four, five, six years, how much life has happened. If you've been here 13 years, how much life, we have shared life together. And when I watch our professors in the classroom, they're just transparent. They try to be authentic. They're trying to say, this is my journey so that God can weave the tapestry of our lives together. And so when we don't get to see it, every semester or every week. It's a, it's a loss for us too, but that's why you came. You came so that this day would arrive. One of the mottos besides training leaders for tough places that has become more and more important to me and has been reflected in the testimonies that you've all brought is that life changes here. You don't come here and dedicate a life to studying God's word and the application of God's word that he does not in turn change who you are. So for those of you who leave, some of you are so kind in your comments about our school, but what you need to know is you changed our school when you came. And some of the very things you value most are the things that you were part of changing so that we are who we are today. One more time, let me tell you. Wherever you go, whatever God does in your life's journey, you need to love God, love his word, and love his people. It doesn't get more basic than that. Tomorrow you join a growing concert of CSBS and C alumni who now literally go around the globe. Some of you won't move an inch from where he's already got you planted. You're already right in the ministry place that he wants you. Others of you will pack your bags and within a day or weeks, you'll be off to next. We go with you. And to that end, let me read a passage that, and I'll tell you why this is dear to me. When I read the book of Philemon, it's one of those places where you see the, the throbbing love that Paul has for all of the people, the churches that he invests in in his life. It's, to me, the book of Philemon is just one of those screaming testaments of love. And it's how we feel about you. He's actually talking to one of his disciples, one of his people that he's trained. He's speaking on behalf of a team and to a team. He's actually speaking then also to a church that's meeting in somebody's house. Not unlike some of you will be involved in starting and leading. And this is what he says. I always thank my God when I mention you in my prayers because I hear of your love and I hear of your faith toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. We pray that way for you too. It's a wonderful thing on a Tuesday when we gather to pray and we will start often by saying, who knows something about 
Has anybody heard anything about? And isn't it wonderful when we can say, oh, you should hear about the love this person has for the saints and for the Lord. I pray that your participation in the faith may become effective through knowing every good thing that's in us for the glory of Christ. For I have great joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brothers and sisters. You make our joy complete. You bring us incredible pleasure when we hear what God's doing in your lives now, and we pray and trust in the years to come. God bless you. Well, so for several years now, uh, DK and Brenda Hale and the Midwest Baptist Association have sponsored uh, this event and, uh, and other parts of our graduation weekend. And we just want to thank you again for that sponsorship and your support and prayers for our students. <laughs> There's also a lot of people from our from students and their families to people in town, in the community, people that drive in from Calgary that uh, work together as volunteers to make this event and tomorrow's events happen. And I just wanna, I wanna thank those people as well. <clears throat> now, it's quite possible that uh, one or more of you out there might be thinking, you know, maybe I need to sign up for some classes. And uh, I want you to, to see the, the bearded Anglophile back there. Uh, Matthew Rowley uh, is one of our graduates. Uh, he is headed off in a couple of short months uh, to do his PhD. But right now, he is the best person to talk to uh, about uh, taking classes at our school. And so catch him after, the, after our time together. Uh, I want to ask you if you could help us in, in about five minutes, we're gonna transform this seating area into a fellowship area. And you could help by that, uh, by placing the chairs, stacking them, and just setting them up against the wall. You can leave a few out if you want around the wall to sit in. Uh, I know there's some that would enjoy that uh, opportunity, but if you can help us with the chairs. Uh, as part of our dessert, we realize that there's some folks that need gluten-free uh, uh, treats. And so those are on the back wall over there uh, where the, all the professor's pictures are lined up. That's the gluten-free area. They'll be watching you as you, as you, no. Um, but we do want to provide for that. And now the last thing, um, I just want to invite Dr. Frankie Rainey to come up and give our closing prayer. Uh, Dr. Frankie and Sue Rainey uh, came to our school almost 10 years ago to, to come on and fill in for one year, fill in for one year. And uh, they have blessed our community with their ministry, with their lives, with their, their example, uh, in so many ways, they have lived on our campus uh, and impacted the lives of hundreds of our students. And not just those, but our, our churches in the area as well have been blessed by them. Um, they have had many farewells already uh, because they have touched so many lives. Um, but we are so grateful to have had them here. They came here with no expectation of compensation. Uh, and have, have just made, as you have heard tonight, in many testimonies, a beautiful impact in our school. Dr. Frank, you're waiting for the, for the last time in your official role as campus pastor. Would you close out our ceremony? Maybe you'd like to stand with me. Would that feel good? <laughs> and we do invite you to pray together. Don't just listen to me, but as I pray, you pray as well. Our Father in heaven, it's such a time of joy to be able to hear testimonies like we've heard tonight, to have been able to walk with these students through their training, to watch your activity in their lives and to celebrate what you're doing. We're very careful to give you all the praise because as many of them have acknowledged, Without your grace and mercy and strength, uh, they couldn't have made it. And we who try to offer some help are totally dependent upon your grace as well. So thank you and praise you. 
And while we're celebrating, as Dr. Blackaby has reminded us, there are thousands of our fellow citizens who are suffering. And we cry out to you, uh, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, that you would minister to them. Thank you for the wonderful response of many people across the world who are helping. I pray that uh, through these tragedies that there will be those of your servants who will share the good news and that lives will be transformed. Now would you please uh, bless the refreshments, bless our fellowship, continue to be honored and glorified. And we're confident that you will because we come to you in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Chair assignments.